we want to give a very special thanks to Mattel for sending these products to us for free. What's up doll collectors and gift givers? Here is another My Froggy Stuff Buyer's Guide. Today we are taking a look at Cave Club. This is a new doll line by Mattel. We got our first look at this line at Toy Fair this year. The packaging is curved in the front, which is creating a little bit of an issue with my lights. Online at Walmart, their suggested retail price is currently $12.94. Keep in mind, prices can change. There are several dolls in this line who are ready to take us back in time for a little prehistoric fun. Here is Slate, Tella, Fernessa, Emberly, and Rorelei. On the back of the box, there is an illustrated picture of each character, and it says, Ever wonder who the first friends were? Meet the Cave Club, a truly unruly group of prehistoric kids who are way ahead of their time. Okay, I see what you're doing because humans and dinosaurs were not around at the same time. So by saying they were ahead of their time, ha, you're making a little loophole. Let's get these dolls out of the box for a closer look. Out of the box, here is Fernessa and her friend Tilly. It is possible to balance her to stand on her own, to have both feet flat. I did have to bend her forward a little. Right out of the box, it looks like we have a little box hair going on. There's a little texture to her hair. She has a light curl. I'll probably do a conditioner hot water rinse to just smooth out some of those ends. Or maybe just a light trim. Her hair is a blend of two shades of pink, and then we have a green streak on the side. Her hair is styled with two little buns in the front. She wears a plant headband. She has plastic leaves on her shoulders attached with a necklace in front. Without the rubber bands from packaging holding it in place, it does move around a little. She has large brown eyes with green mascara underneath. Her eyebrows are kind of a shade of purple. It's the same color that is on her lip. She has some green painted details under her eye, little dots with a leaf, painted teeth. She can move at the head, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the hip, the knee. There is no joint at the ankle. She has a pretty good range of motion for her arms. She can totally touch her ear, touch her nose, and sorta, kinda, almost touch her forehead. She wears a dress that velcros in the back. It's kind of a cheetah flower print with a sunset background. There's a fabric leaf around her waist. The top of the dress is hemmed, and the bottom is like a heat-sealed edge, like a burned polyester. The leaves around her ankles are plastic with painted flowers, and yes, she's barefoot. Here's her friend Tilly. It's a green pterosaur with pink hair and an orange beak. And look at that, her head can move. Fernessa likes plants and she comes with a little plant accessory. It's like a rock pot with a handle and you can pull the sides down and the flower goes inside and then you can make the flower blossom. Blossom! She also has a comb that looks like a bone. This was in the packaging and it's pretty cool. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet, but it's still cool. It's like that neon plastic that has a little bit of a glow on the edges. Nice. Fernessa is kind of cute. Standing around eight inches tall, she has a really small neck, which makes me think she might be a good candidate for body transplants with Chelsea dolls. You would just end up with a Chelsea doll with very large feet. Out of curiosity, I just totally pulled her head off. And uh, yeah, that sounds horrible. But now we can see the neck peg. 
here is a Chelsea doll head. It's not an exact match, but it will give us an idea of what it looks like. And I'm thinking that upper body, yes. Lower half, well, that's kind of hmm, interesting. But with the smaller head, it's very easy to balance her to stand. The proportions are definitely off, but now we can see what it looks like. Here is Rorelai and her furry friend, Pharrell. Rorelai's hair is crimped on the top. She has a bone hair accessory. Then her hair is long and straight in the back. She has greenish brown eyes, white face paint, and a little pink rectangle on the bridge of her nose. Her eyebrows are like a lavender and purple. She has a faux fur fashion accessory that goes behind her neck, around her arms, and uses elastic in the back. She has a purple and black strapless top sewn to a one-shoulder dress. It velcros in the back. She wears a purple plastic belt with painted teeth and plastic furry leg warmers. She has an orange bag with a piece that can be detached so she can wear it in her hair. Pharrell is purple with pink hair. One paw is up and there's a little tail right there in the back. The head can move from side to side. And she comes with a purple bone comb. Here is Emberly. Her hair is crimped on the top and the bottom. This is some really bright colored hair. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but there's two shades of pink right here. And then we have a little bit of yellow at the top right there. She wears bangs, has a plastic hair accessory that looks like a wrap with a bone. She has green eyes, freckles, and some face art on the side. She wears a blue halter top that ties around the neck with a bone. She wears a yellow and blue asymmetrical skirt with a plastic belt and a teal colored tool and pink ankle accessories. Here is her friend Flair, a pink dinosaur with orange feathers or hair on top. The head can move. She comes with a club that looks like a stone with some rope wrapped around it. When you open it, she has a flame inside. So it turns into a torch. There is a little handle so she can hold it. And she comes with a pink bone hair comb. Say hello to Tella. She has very long hair. The front of her hair is pulled up. It's a blue and a very pale pink. Then she has a lavender purplish color crystal hair accessory. The rest of her hair is also pulled up into a ponytail. It's two shades of blue and it just hangs down in the back. She has shades of purple and green eyes with face paint that looks like stars and a moon. She wears green eyeshadow on her eyelids and a green mascara on the bottom. She wears a blue, pink, purple, and blue again ombre dress with black details. There is a little bit of tulle at the shoulders with ribbon straps, and the bottom is fluffy. The top is separate from the fluffy skirt. The top velcros in the back, and the skirt has an elastic waistband. I don't know if you can even see that, but it's there. She wears a lime green belt with charms hanging off of it and blue ankle accessories. She comes with like a little telescope or a kaleidoscope because it's got that little jewel cut on the lens. You can kind of see in there. This is Hunch, her furry friend. It's blue with a fluffy tail and purple hair on top. And she comes with a blue bone comb. Last but not least, here is Slate. He has blue and green hair. It is crimped in the front, then it swooshes to the side in the back. The rest of his hair is painted. He has green eyes, teal and blue eyebrows, and pink splatters on his cheeks. He wears a brown tooth necklace, a green and yellow sleeveless top with black and white details. He has a paint palette attached to his arm, 
holds a brown paintbrush with green paint. He wears shorts with an elastic waistband and black stripes. The top and the shorts are two separate pieces and the top velcros in the back. And he finishes his look with teal colored ankle accessories with brown painted laces. His legs appear to be pretty much the same as the girl's, but his upper body is different. He has more muscular arms and larger hands. This is his friend Taggy, which is like a dinosaur chicken. He comes with a belt that has a compartment for more paintbrushes. It is a sticker detail, and there's a little spot to hold his brown paintbrush. Oh, I am mistaken. It's not a belt, it's like a little sling. It goes across his chest. And now he is ready to paint anywhere, anytime. And he comes with a green bone comb. So here are all of the dolls side by side. And they all have a little something special about them. Slate likes to paint. Fernessa likes plants. Tella sees the future. Rorlai is fierce. And she was raised by saber-toothed tigers, apparently. And Emberly is a master of fire. There is a cartoon series on YouTube where they teach kind of like life lessons. Like the first, I'm sorry. And that's a running theme with the cave club. Everything is the first because they are the first humans. Well, except for their parents, of course. In the episode, Rorlai did mention she had human parents. So... Dino Baby Crystals! Each one has four surprises inside with a molding compound. Do you see that right there? Out of the box, they look like rocks with crystals coming out of the top. We have some dinosaur footprints right there. They look like theropods. Then a few shells around the sides. On the bottom, it says cave club. Let's remove the top. And inside, we find little packages. Inside, there's a little pillow sculpted into the cup. We have four mystery packages and a collector's guide. It says there are nine to collect. Each set includes a clip, a baby dino, an accessory, and slime or sand. So since slime or sand is involved, make sure you do this on a protected surface. Let's open the first one. I like this printed paper or plastic. It's all sparkly. I wish there was a way to keep it. I don't know. Might have to think about that one. How do I open this? I'm gonna need scissors. Okay, so we have some green hair with a little bone. In the smallest bag, we have a bottle. Yes, this is a bottle and it looks like it has little leaves on it. And we found the sand. It's kind of, uh, it's a compound type sand, but I'm totally just gonna leave that in there. Nice and neat. So this last one has to be our baby dinosaur. Yep, it totally is. It looks like a pink little triceratops with blue spots, yellow, bright yellow horns, and there is some articulation here. The head can move, the legs, all the legs. Wait, wait, can that one move? Yep, all the legs can move and the tail can move. Oh, I like that it's articulated. And then we can place the little hair accessory on top and give her or him some hair and we can feed the baby dinosaur with the bottle. But yeah, okay, we can pretend to feed the dinosaur with the bottle. Here's another look at that shaping compound. It does have a little sparkle in there, but I'm mainly here for the toys. It looks like we can use the packaging as a little bed for our baby dinosaur. On the bottom of the crystal, there's a little ring around it, so you could probably store your shaping compound in here and close this down to keep the air out. 
That is my guess. There are no names listed on the collector's guide, but you can totally check them off as you find them. Let's see who our next baby dinosaur is. Ooh, this one is squishy. So I'm gonna say this is definitely slime. Do I have to open it? I'm gonna do this for you. Inside we have blue watery slime. It's got some glitter in it. Here, hold on, I'll give you a better look. There we go. Blue watery slime with glitter. Now we'll go back, go back inside. There we go. The slime did give us a little clue about who our baby dinosaur might be. There's only one dinosaur on the collector's guide with blue slime. See that one right there? Some kind of plesiosaur. And my packaging is kind of already open, so yay. Am I right? Lots of crackly sounds, yes! It's a little blue plesiosaur with a tail that moves. It's little fins move. The head is stationary. Let's check out those accessories. And it looks like we have some little floaties that fit right onto the fins, or flippers, I guess. And our last surprise is curly pink hair. One dino baby crystal to go. Once again, we have slime. Our first surprise is a hair accessory, and it's some green curly hair. Our next surprise is a little toy. That is super tiny. It's actually really, really cute. I actually like that, like, a lot. I have a feeling that this is the little prehistoric sloth looking creature. Are we correct? Am I right? Yeah! The head can move, the arms can move, the legs can move. Hmm, I wonder if she can sit. She or he can sit. Yay! Put the hair on top. Now our baby prehistoric sloth can play with the toy. I just looked it up and sometimes this animal was referred to as a ground sloth. It would have been so cool if they included a little information about the prehistoric animal these figures were based on. Dinosaurs was my favorite class in college and I wasn't sure if it would ever actually come in handy. Well, until today. And every time I watch a dinosaur movie, I'm literally screaming at the TV screen saying, that's not a Velociraptor. It's a Deinonychus. All right, all right, don't get me started. Overall, Cave Club is a fun collection. Lots of different skin tones, hair colors, hair textures, face paint, fashion. I really like that all the dolls can stand on their own. I like that the head can move from side to side, but it would have been nice if they could look up and down. Coming out the gates with an articulated boy is definitely a plus. They have cute little themed accessories. I think the torch is definitely one of my favorites. Each doll comes with a pet, and the dino baby crystals allows you to switch them out for a pet with more articulation. However, with their size being so small, they might run into some compatibility issues with popular dollhouse 10 to 12 inch furniture and accessories. But if you're looking for a craft for them, you might want to consider our slime waterfall. Even without the slime, with its rocky terrain, it makes a pretty cool background. Thank you for joining us while we took a look at Cave Club. Let us know in the comments down below if this line is a buy or a pass. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at myfroggystuff and the frog vlog. And we will see you next time.